refrigeration and air conditioning part two basic refrigeration cycle it consists a compressor where uh, gas from the evaporator outlet it receives and in the compressor we can see this gas is compressed and elevated its pressure and passing out to the condenser Conden and this liquid passing out to the condenser in the condenser there will be heat exchange uh, process where the uh, the cooling medium will enter here and your uh, refrigerant will enter here and then because of this uh, counter flow and uh, mix flow pattern there will be a uh, heat transfer and this gas will cool down thereafter this gas uh, will converted into liquid the, there will be phase change uh, from gas state to liquid state then uh, this liquid e will collect in a receiver sometimes this receiver is incorporated in the condenser also then this liquid is uh, sent to the expansion valve thermodynamic expansion valve here in this right upper corner that you can see as the high pressure liquid enters it it has a small orifice or the throttle valve with a variable orifice so this high pressure gas pressure will be lowered into a, a lower valley as the pressure get lowers there will be a kind of evaporation or phase change because at lower pressure we know that uh, gas uh, the liquid will tends to evaporate so small boiling of a flashing of takes place still that we can consider this is majorly the liquid small portion the dryness fraction is less the small portion of uh, gas will be present here and it enters the evaporate here it is pure liquid and thereafter it is like wet uh, vapor mostly containing liquid particles and in the evaporator it can uh, absorb the heat from the surrounding it absorb the heat from the surrounding and this liquid will trans uh, converted into or evaporated into uh, gas let's see now what is vapor compression cycle and what important uh, areas that we have to consider uh, as thermodynamic uh, process this is vapor compression cycle we can see this is a temperature this axis is a temperature and this one is entropy it's donated by s as you remember in my first video this is the shape of uh, temp uh, temperature against the entropy of uh, any uh, substance like a liquid or uh, water and then you can see we have uh, divided this um, graph or the vapor compression cycle into four regions a to b b to c c to d and d to a let's see what are those a to b is heat absorption in the evaporator which means this region is the area where that evaporator uh, works as you can see as the temperature okay this is the phase change region between this liquid line and the gas line this area is the phase change or latent heat uh, absorbing or latent heat involved with this region so a to b that there won't be okay not be actually up to this line this line there won't be let's say if i note it down as x from a to x there won't be any uh, increment in temperature of the refrigerant then after point x x to b is superheating time this is the later part of the evaporator sometimes we are using special superheater arrangement or heat exchanger to increase the superheating value and after evaporator it is going to the compressor the compressor you can see it must enter with a superheated gas otherwise there is a tendency that liquid molecules enter into the 
compressor where it can lead to damage your compressor because the liquid molecules are incompressible then there will be hydraulic lock and subsequently damaging your compressor so we do not prefer any uh, state of phase change in the compressor and one more thing that we have to consider a to b it is isobaric heat absorption in the operator what does it mean by isobaric that means constant pressure why the pressure should constant because you see in the evaporator there is the heat transfer takes place from the surrounding it takes so that means the saturation temperature or the boiling temperature of the gas in the saturation temperature or the boiling temperature there that is the latent part involving so without increasing the refrigerant temperature it absorbs surrounding heat if you alter the pressure as we all know increment of pressure will increase the boiling point as well as decrease of any pressure of the substance will decrease its boiling point so throughout the evaporator if you want to maintain the room uh, or the space temperature a particular value throughout the evaporator you have to maintain the pressure at a constant so the boiling temperature of the gas would not change throughout the operator that is very important we have to maintain isobaric uh, heat absorption when the evaporator is large this is quite difficult because there will be practically there will be some uh, pressure difference so which means at the evaporator inlet the boiling temperature will be higher than the outlet of the evaporator this will uh, give us disadvantage because later the refrigerant which enters to the evaporator will tends to completely get evaporated on the halfway of the evaporator so the later part of the evaporator will not be useful so there is a special arrangement to avoid such occurring we'll discuss this thing later right and then from b to c that is the area okay b to c is the area isentropic compression in the compressor you can see in the compressor as the compressor working okay definitely pressure will rise and it should be isentropic the entropy should not change what does it mean i have explained you on my previous video entropy is the disorderness it is a measure of a degree of level of the disorderness if the gas enters to the compressor it must leave as the gas there shouldn't be any phase change or change in material uh, the uh, substance phase so because it may lead to damage the compressor if inside the compressor as the pressure increase if this gas tends to become liquid then it will damage your compressor because the liquid uh, is not uh, compressible though it is clear uh, the isentropic is required in our compressor from c to d let's say first c to y if i nominate this point as y it is okay c to d we can completely say we can say it is uh, in the condenser after the compressor we will send this thing to the condenser again c to d is isobaric heat remover what do you mean by isobaric the pressure is constant again here here entropy is constant here the pressure is constant and again in the condenser pressure is constant because that you have done external work done to increase the pressure of the gas why because we want to liquefy the gas with lower temperature so if you lower the pressure then it is difficult to make that gas to uh, change its phase to liquid we do not want to lose the pressure so in the condenser by maintaining pressure uh, at the value as it's a discharge from its compressor that we have to cool down the uh, gas then it will become uh, as it's 
uh, superheated value coming us and as it reaches the saturated gas line then there will be phase change we call it as dew point we can say so the at this point it start the phase change and all the gas become liquid up to the saturated liquid line here will be wet vapor and from this point it is completely converted into liquid but you can see we will take further cooling down from this point if i nominate it as z z to d as it's further decreasing it will uh, move to the left hand side of the liquid line we call it as subcooling region or undercooling why why this is important that lowering the temperature we can see this part is latent heat this part is sensible heat and this part again sensible heat we want to remove some heat or from the uh, refrigerant the reason is gentlemen after the condenser we are sending this to the expansion valve where that you are effectively dropping the pressure across it because it's act as a variable orifice so this condenser outlet pressure will reduce to a lower value let's say if you start directly sending the expansion valve from uh, uh, point z then this curve it may follow this line instead of this line so which means you can can you see i think it's clear the amount of phase change when it enters the evaporator when it in, in uh, that almost that latent heat part already gone the remaining part is from here to here so the effective the efficiency of the system will lower this happens because of boil off this phase change happen because of this pressure difference in the orifice it tends it will create it will make that uh, liquid to boil off so to uh, prevent or minimize that effect we have to cool down it further so even though there is pressure difference and uh, absorbing heat from the expansion valve surrounding that much of boil off will not want take place so we have to cool it down then the curve comes to it will shift to this much le to left increasing the efficiency of the system right so this is the basic uh, thing uh, we have to make sure that from process d to a it should be constant in that way which means the energy which is containing in this uh, liquid of the refrigerant they, it should not lose in the expansion valve because expansion valve we do not want to have any heat transfer the main purpose of the expansion valve is just to lower the pressure so we can reduce the boiling temperature of the refrigerant right so if if there is going to have a heat exchange then we lose our energy so the the uh, theoretical ideal process in the expansion valve there should not be any enthalpy change so we prefer constant enthalpy we call isenthalpic process from d to a right uh, this is the basic vapor compression cycle so this is the theory or background behind these things and uh, let's move uh, how actual system is uh, in place and what are the specific arrangement in the actual reefer plant apart from that there is heat energy equivalent of work done means uh, what we have supplied to the compressor the work done that we have uh, done from by our side on the compressor on the gas and from the gas that how much heat is removed from the system uh, the surrounding uh, that is the idea of the heat energy current work done which means it is equal to heat energy rejected minus heat energy received and uh, this is equal the area under a b c d and area under a to d 
right and uh, this i will explain a later session also and you can see it is clearly in this this is a pressure versus enthalpy uh, diagram uh, the, it behaves in that way you can see in the condenser the pressure is constant and uh, in the expansion valve pressure is reduced from p2 value to p1 and they are won't there should not be any enthalpy range enthalpy should be constant and in the evaporator there should not be any pressure variation so here the pressure constant here the enthalpy constant and in the compressor again enthalpy also increases and pressure also increases in the condenser we do not want to have any pressure uh, variation and uh, we can say in the compressor we do not want to have change in entropy so en entropy should be constant as we discussed earlier uh, this is the uh, work done uh, by the gas removal of the heat so heat energy received from the cold chamber area under ab and heat energy rejected in the condenser area under c d this is the condenser right heat energy equivalent work done is heat energy rejected uh, minus heat energy received so area under c d minus area under a b so this will be the equivalent work done. and the next one is economizer for subcooling subcooling that i have already explained in the uh, expansion well we do not want to have uh, evaporation of uh, or flash of take place so then what we have to do we have to lower the sensible heat value or the temperature of the refrigerant how we can achieve we can achieve by a economizer or a heat exchanger the simple arrangement is like that the compressor okay from the compressor outlet it's going to the condenser and this condenser outlet that we have to get it cooled down how you can get it cooled down you can pass through it and may uh, to have uh, some airflow mixed with the evaporator outlet evaporator outlet coil is taking and forming a heat exchanger combination of condenser outlet and evaporator outlet because evaporator outlet we have to get it superheated this one we need to have superheat plus this one we need to get uh, sub cooling so this one uh, is very economy because we are using same gas uh, to get this uh, two uh, status we call it as economizer economizer or else we can say that is uh, a heat exchanger but this is how the subcooling achieved if subcooling is not correct then there will be tendency that icing up that you can notice soon after the expansion valve because the flashing off is too much and it will cause to lose your refrigerant effect let's see what are the desirable properties of the refrigerants it must have low boiling point because the boiling point is the value that the temperature it, it is it will decide the temperature that you have to maintain the tem the room uh, so if the boiling point is high to lower the boiling point you have to lower the pressure you see water will boil at 100 degree at 180 m and if it is goes to minus uh, or vacuum then you may get uh, boil it off at around 65 degree celsius so if you want to lower the boiling point you have to definitely reduce the pressure so if the refrigerant itself has a low boiling point so you don't want to go for vacuum that you can uh, maintain the system with high pressure as a, a, above the ambient uh, pressure condition atm pressure right and the low condensing pressure the second point it must have low condensing pressure because if the condensing pressure is high you have to use a heavy machinery a heavy compressor to make this uh, pressure building up increase the pressure of the gas so then it will uh, condense right so this scantling and strengthening works the pipings and everything will be uh, large 
and also importantly if the pressure the system pressure is elevated then there is tendency of leaking then high specific enthalpy of evaporation this is the latent part, latent heat part it should have high specific enthalpy so one kilogram of gas can absorb much more heat of course then the, the less amount of gas you can use as well as small system that you can use low specific low specific volume in vapor state that is also quite important vapor state if the gas consume much or it, it occupies much more volume then your condenser has to be big so again the plant size will be increased so you need to have low specific volume this number five is very much important the high critical temperature because above critical temperature no matter how much pressure that you apply on the gas it will never become liquid so if you want to maintain on your onboard cooling mode temperature let's say normally you are maintaining uh, around 30 32 something if your critical temperature is above uh, less than this value let's say 25 you will never be able to cool down the gas uh, that its space change to liquid so you have to have a higher critical temperature for the refrigerant at least 40 or 45 degrees then it is very good then you can maintain your uh, cooling water temperature somewhere around 38 even so will, the plant will not creep and the pressures will not go up and the smooth operation you can uh, have and it should be non-corrosive and non-solvent and it should be stable under working condition, non-flammable and non-explosive, no action with oil. Yes, there should not be a reaction with oil, but there should be miscible. Uh, it should uh, mix with oil and because it helps to uh, bring back the oil which were carried over to the system. Then easy leak detection. Non-toxic, of course, there are ammonia, carbon dioxide, some uh, refrigerants are there which is harmful and uh, it should be non-toxic and cheap easily stored and on board and it should be not banned by IMO or other regulator so these are the basic properties that are required for uh, desirable properties for refrigerant so as IMO guideline will go through a quick uh, look so uh, we call these all DS or ozone depletion substances. Uh, these CFCs and HCFCs, chlorofluorocarbon and hydrochlorofluorocarbon uh, refrigerants. This contributes to the global warming effect. So and damage our ozone layer. So the IMO and the international regulation bodies uh, that limit the use of this gas. Uh, for us as marine engineer, Marple Annex 6 Regulation 12 says that CFC or Halen are not permitted on ships after constructed uh, 19 May 2005. Or HCFC equipments are prohibited uh, since January 1st, 2020. And if the system already has this, then there should be some controllable measures like uh, these uh, refrigerants are prohibited non-deliberate or deliberate release to atmosphere so why these gas are harmful because the cfc they can withstand they can uh, their atmosphere lifetime is 6 to 540 years that will damage our ozone layer such as r11 and r12 where hcfcs they are uh, 2 to 22 years they will uh, atmos they have lifespan in atmosphere that is R22 and Freon 22. The HFCs, uh, these are the most of uh, modern uh, refrigerant, uh, like R32, R125, R134, A, like that. And some inorganic uh, refrigerant like uh, carbon dioxide, water, ammonia, and they are, yes, they are not ozone depleting substances. Right, if you have ODS, uh, I mean also on depleting substance, that you have to maintain an ODS record book as per IMO, right? So, these existing ships can continue. Of course, you have to maintain ODS substances. Uh, these, which may include this record, a list of equipment containing ODS, you have to have one. If the ship has a rechargeable system containing ODS, 
then you should have ODS record book and uh, you have to leak uh, you have to check for the leaks and you have to maintain uh, regular testing of this leak the system leaks and uh, ODS entry may contain recharge of equipment repair or maintenance done in the system or uh, discharge of ODS to atmosphere non deliberately or deliberately whatever and discharge of ODS to land based facilities actually what you have to do is you have to collect it into a recovery bottle and then you have to dispose it to discharge into shore based facility and you have to maintain uh, the supply of ODS to ship um, so these uh, are the records and documents that you have to maintain uh, as per IM. And uh, for this session, I will be stopping here. And from next day onwards, uh, next topic onward, that is quite interesting. That you we will discuss into the real operation of the refrigeration plant, including meat room, vegetable room, and the fish room. And uh, what is the purpose of thermal expansion valve, balancing uh, externally balanced type expansion valve, the back pressure valve? Then we will go for the capacity control, and there will be many more. So you can be with me and uh, I'll be explaining you everything that you have to know regarding refrigeration. Thank you.